So now the next technique of the tongue mudra. Your tongue is in position. You've got the tongue mudra going so that you can feel the inside of the nasal passage turned on by the tongue position and connected with the palate. Because you have three points in contact, you've got a pretty good seal between your tongue and your palate. You now begin a very gentle upward and downward undulating movement of the tongue, enough that you can feel it affecting your palate. As you lift your tongue, you feel your palate float upward just a little bit. And as you lower your tongue, you feel a force drawing your palate down a little bit. It's as if your palate is floating, which in fact, it actually is. Your palate is in a floating relationship to the neighboring bones of your head. The maxilla, they're called, in which the upper teeth are mounted. And yes, indeed, your palate does float, but it, you tend to have your palate float in a fixed position because your head tensions are generally fixated. Whereas, as you're discovering, the tongue mudra causes your head to soften a little bit, causes the bones of the head to rest in the more of a floating relationship. And if you've experienced the crunchings of your upper neck and head that I described with different positionings of the tongue mudra, you're experiencing that floating relationship and you can deliberately increase it to speed the internal changes that occur from the tongue mudra. And these changes result in a mental clarifying state that is a process of your mind getting clearer and clearer and noticing the ways in which your gaze of your inner eye is not centered or even right to left. And by intending the right and left sides to become more equal, Further, mental clarification occurs and releases occur that you didn't know could occur. So by doing the floating, the floating palate technique, you stimulate, accelerate, and increase these internal changes. The rise and lowering of your tongue occurs about once every two seconds. So slow down and slow down and slow down the rising and falling of your tongue until you feel your palate going along with your tongue movements. If you go too fast or too far, you'll get a disconnect between your palate and your tongue. Slow down, make the movements smaller until the two engage and stay engaged throughout the rising and falling. You'll find the exact speed by experimentation. Once you've got a good engagement between your tongue and your floating palate, again, gaze into and through the place you feel the greatest sensation. The bite your tongue version 